Today, I want to jump in and touch on the importance of why you need to learn a little bit of HTML and CSS as a website designer. I know you're like, whoa, hold on, Jen, don't you teach Elementor and page builders and drag and drop and all this easy stuff that's supposed to be like no code. Why are you talking about HTML and CSS and all these scary languages and all these abbreviations and all this stuff that's like really, really scary. So I promise it's actually not that bad. We're going to take a step back, relax a little bit. And I'm going to tell you a few reasons why it's important just to know the bare minimum to be able to be an even better website designer. So my first tip on helping with this is just understanding a little bit of what HTML does and what CSS does. And so this is one of the most fun analogies that I've come up with. Um, I actually came across it at one point and I teach it in one of the lessons in the course and it makes me laugh every time we teach it. But HTML, I want you to think of as just a naked plain person, right? Okay. CSS is like the clothes that they wear and the style that they have. Okay. So you can actually have a plain naked boring person <laughs> and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But as you begin to add CSS to it, the style and their clothes and things like that, they just become better all around unless you're into that kind of thing. So I know they can be a little bit scary sounding, but I do want you to understand they're the underlying pieces of what you're building. So even if you are building with like a drag and drop page builder like Elementor, which is my favorite, um, you need to understand what Elementor is actually even doing on the back end to make your website look the way that it's looking. So it's really helpful to just at least become familiar with it. I mentioned in another video, like let's become like kindergarten level familiar with it, right? So kindergartners can't um, like read and do all kinds of more complex things. They're just kind of learning the ABCs. They're just getting familiar with some of the concepts. And so that's what I'm asking you to do here. So in the case of HTML, it's going to help you understand how the site is actually built and structured. So for example, Google reads things like our body text, right? Our H1 styles or H2 styles. So if you've been designing websites or you're familiar with any of it at all, those things should sound pretty familiar to you. Okay. But if you're understanding that an H1 heading is read differently by Google because of the underlying HTML, and then an H2 is read differently and an H3 is read differently and the body copy is read differently. And then your images that have um, alt text or descriptions or captions, all of that stuff is read and seen differently by Google and other search engines because of the underlying HTML that is telling Google, Hey, this is important. This is less important. This is really important. This is what this image is about. All of that stuff. So we don't want to get into a habit of using H1 and H2 and things like that just for the look of something. You don't want to say like, oh, this would look cool if this quote was really big. But if that quote has nothing to do with what the rest of the page is about, you don't want to make it into um, a heading style or something just for looks. You can do that just by changing the text size without actually changing what Google is reading. And so if you understand a little bit of HTML and how the order of things are getting read by some of these robots and stuff, then you'll begin to see and use better for yourself and for clients, the actual structure that's meant to be used by websites. So this one almost could have come first, but honestly, when you start to learn a little bit of code, a little bit of HTML, a little bit of CSS, if you even look down the rabbit hole of like JavaScript and all this other stuff, you are honestly going to appreciate your low code and page builders and drag and drop things even more. So sometimes I would suggest people look into learning just a little bit of it. And as soon as they do, and as soon as they start to get overwhelmed by it or nervous by it, they're like, I'm so thankful for things like Elementor and Squarespace and these drag and drop builders. Another thing that's helped me personally as a designer learning um, some HTML and now learning actually quite a bit of CSS, it's helped me to know my limits within a project. So if I'm trying to do something or accomplish something on a page, a certain look or certain style or whatever, um, I'm able to know because of the amount of CSS and HTML that I do know, I'm able to assess like, is this something I can do? Is it something I can dig into the code for? Is it something I need help with? It's okay if you need a little bit of help on it. Um, you can ask in, Facebook groups and discussion forums. You can actually hire um, somebody just hourly to come in and help fix a little bit of an issue or give you a leg up on something. And then one of the other benefits of this is if you know a little bit about both of those languages, you'll actually know what to Google um, or what to search for when you're actually running into whatever the issue is. So um, I have a friend that me and her go back and forth sometimes and she'll send me like screenshots of, Hey, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to close this gap or whatever, because I'm familiar with some of those terms and I'm familiar with the way websites are structured. I'm able to immediately tell her like, Hey, why don't you try to decrease the margin here? Or have you tried, um, you know, like a negative margin on this thing or whatever. So because I know some of those um, 
rough vocabulary words and I know what those things do, she's able to then go and Google and find the solution that she needs. So just being familiar with some of the terms and some of the um, jargon and stuff around HTML, CSS, and even really JavaScript too, I'm not touching on that too much, but um, those would be three great ones to start with. Just knowing a little bit about them is going to help you when you run into an issue and you want to do something special or you want to change something, you're going to know how to Google it and find out the rest of it or how to look it up on YouTube or whatever your search engine favorite is. I also think by having that little leg up on knowing some of the jargon and some of the industry words that fall within HTML and CSS and other design languages, you're going to actually know um, when you can say yes to certain things and when you need to say no to them. So this kind of goes into the, you know, getting help if you need it. But I found that since I've been familiar with those things now for years, I'm able to look at a project and take whatever we're trying to do. And I'll just be able to tell like this is something that's going to need a decent amount of code or not. And so if you're not familiar with those things at all, you can get, um, I hate to say overly confident, but if you're in the middle of building and you're dragging and dropping and using some of these really cool and really effective and efficient tools that are out there nowadays, um, but you just think like, oh, I can design anything in those, that's not always the case. Those things do still have their limits, although they're, um, they just completely grow every day in the abilities and the functionality that they have. There are still some limits to it. And if you're not able to see like this is not going to do this and I'm going to need code to fill in the gap there, um, the more you learn about those things, you're going to be able to see kind of some of those gaps and then you'll know whether you're able to help fill those in or, um, you know, kind of have like a, I can figure this out attitude. So once you've learned a little bit about that, I feel like that attitude kind of builds up more and more in you like, well, I know how to do most of this. And so I can figure out this last little part that I need. So I'm sure a question that you're asking then is like, okay, well, Jenna, if you're telling us we need to learn some of this stuff, like where we go to do this. So let me give you a few resources for this and I will make sure and put links for this um, in this video. So one of my favorite ones, and this actually consistently comes up when I Google things, it's okay. I still Google things um, all the time is that um, the website is called w3schools.com. So schools with an S on the end. And typically if I said um, like, you know, add an outline, a negative offset, um, you know, offset an outline, something like that. Um, one of the first things that's going to come up if I don't remember the code for it is going to be from this W3 schools. And so one of the other cool things about that website is it will basically like show you and teach you a little bit about what the code is doing. It'll give you some options for, um, like say for positioning something, there's like position absolute and position fixed and some of these other things. So it'll reiterate what the different options are. And then it'll give an example and there's a button on there that you can click run and it brings up a separate window and it shows you the code, the HTML, and then, um, you can play around with the different versions of it and you can change a few things and hit run and right beside it, it shows the result of that code. And so I think being able to play with that without having to like pull it into your website or put your website in some kind of weird editor mode or whatever, being able to do it on a site like that is really helpful. Um, CodePen is another one that lets you do this. You can play with people's um, HTML, CSS and JavaScript. They're like three in one on the same screen and you can run that as well and play with your own versions of that. One place that I actually learned quite a bit of this, um, they've changed the name now, but it is, LinkedIn learning. It used to be lynda.com and I had a subscription to it um, for years and then actually figured out that my library had free access to it. And so check with your local public library. Um, they may be able to get you in to have access to that or it may have already some kind of subscription to that. Um, there's also things like Skillshare, Udemy. Sometimes you can get classes for free or $10 or less um, when you're wanting to just learn something. And then a lot of times little hacks and bits and pieces of things um, are on older forums and older discussion things. So before like Facebook groups and YouTube had gotten a whole lot bigger and where people might ask questions like that there now there's a lot of things from probably like 2016 and under 2015 and under that are still completely relevant because coding is a language so it hasn't changed um, people can kind of do more things with it now or the results that they do may be um, a little more modernized and things like that but the issues that people would have or the questions people would have are sometimes still the same and so you may be able to look back and be able to find answers to your questions that people have had in the past and then my last tool for being able to learn this, um, it's not something that's going to directly teach you. It's going to take um, action and input on your end. But if you use the Google Chrome browser, so if you don't use that already, I'd highly suggest you at least have that as an option, if not completely switch to it. Um, Chrome's developer, Google's developer tools within inside of that, there um, is two options. You can use the inspect tool, which is something that I basically have pulled up on my screen all the time. Um, even though I use pretty low and almost no code solutions to stuff, I still enjoy 
odd. I still enjoy going in and inspecting certain elements on a site. And then also within those developer tools is um, an area called view page source. And so if you just go to a favorite website, it does not have to be some crazy complex website. You can go, go to mine, go whatever, go to a website and right click on it. And you can say, if you have those tools on there, you can say right click inspect and go down and it'll pull up a panel across the bottom or maybe somewhere else on your screen and begin to just look through and there's um, a little option that shows you it's like an arrow with a couple of different devices you can see um, and begin to highlight and you can see how the page is structured and then um, as it shows you the code on one side it shows you like the css on another side and then if you go into um, separately if you right click and say view page source it will show you everything that the website is reading and so i've even used this before um if we're curious like i'll have a client that's in a certain area you know and they maybe say okay one of their competitors is ranking a lot higher on google for these certain keywords and they're like i don't know what keywords they're using you can use tools like that to even dig into stuff like that that has nothing to do with the website building has to do with seo search engine optimization um, but i can go in and use that google developer tool and say view, view page source and we can go down and look and find their different images and see like what they're naming their images or see words that may be on the back end and it's stuff that google and these search engines are reading but it may not be something that is forward facing to us to be able to see um just as we like view their website okay so those are a few resources if you want to take my advice and begin to learn a few of these things um as always i try to be a resource for that too i've got um the facebook group here and then um just feel free to ask me other questions about it and i'm happy to point you in a resource of something else that i've done or something else smarter and um, somebody smarter than me has done as well i'll see you guys next time